Today on RJ's Workshop, we're going to turn this into this, so stay tuned. Okay, for this machinery skate setup, the design is based around materials I had on hand. Uh, I've got quite a bit of one inch hot rolled solid stock, some half inch by four in or half inch by four inch again hot rolled. Um, so the basis is going to be two of these axles welded to this plate, some screws screwed in or drilled through it. A uh, piece of two by four soft pine well or screwed into the top. The pine softwood, so the machine will actually bite into it a little bit. It's a little less likely to skid off something like this hard steel. And then these bearings are uh, the cheapest bearings I could find on eBay. This design is not the. This is not a professional uh, machinery skate. That's good. You know, if you're going to do this day in and day out, I would beef up this design. Uh, mainly the bearings, the biggest thing. These are 5 8 ID, inch and 3 8 OD, on uh, 7 16 wide. I believe I looked up and these are for like mower deck bearings. So I could buy a sleeve of them for like 11 bucks or something. So I ended up buying uh, 30 of them because I'm going to need 24. Because the bearings are fairly small, I'm going to double them up on each axle. So again, this. Uh, this set of skates, I'm going to move a couple of machines a few times. I'm not that... I was going more for inexpensive than super high quality because this is going to be a low, low use item. Uh, and then when I uh, turn the axle down to fit the bearings, I've got some nice flange head bolts that fit and touch off on the inner race quite nicely. These are some Ford uh, OEM bolts. Uh, somebody, a friend of mine, was scrapping a truck, pulled motor and transmission, all sorts of stuff out of it. And so I just had free reign, so I just went around and took every bolt I could find out of it. These are really nice, uh, high quality bolts with this flange on here, which will line up just nice. So I'm actually gonna have a metric thread. I believe these are M8 by 1.25, so that's what's going to be drilled and tapped in here. Uh, just a couple of quick things. I did a, as you saw at the beginning, I did a quick 3D model of this, and I made myself a print. These prints aren't the best drawings I've ever done. It's enough, it's a good reminder for me. It's quicker for me to be able to just reference a few dimensions on here. And on the axles, there are a few critical uh, tight tolerance um, dimensions here that I really want to make sure I pay attention to. So I want to just print this out. It gives me a good reference, uh, a little less likely to make a mistake. And the, cre the key dimensions are uh, the OD of where the bearing goes needs to be a, a real nice size so they fit tightly. And then the other thing is, is the, the shoulder that these are going to go on. I don't want the axle to stick out uh, past the end of these. So basically when I cut this shoulder, it's going to be about ten thousandths of an inch less than the thickness of these two bearings. That way, the bolt, when it screws in, will capture and it'll put some preload on that inner race. So, pretty straightforward, nothing too exciting. Um, I'm going to start turning some metal and put these buggers together. Time to weld these together. You can see I've got a chunk of aluminum to support the base 
and then underneath the axle I've got a quarter inch plate to space it up off of the back of the base plate so there's a consistent spacing here you can see I'm using a map gas torch just to get some heat into it because it's such large chunks of material and then I'm just tack welding together with a TIG. The key to the setup here is, is we're trying to make the two axles uh, perfectly parallel together. So after I get the first one tacked together I take another chunk of aluminum and I put it in between the two axles and I clamp it together and that keeps the front axle and the rear axle spaced properly so that they'll track true. Looks good. Taking this all the way through, I ended up stick welding it with some 7018. Now comes the fun part, cleaning up. Part of the reason I don't like stick welding very much is all the slag and spatter and things that get stuck on the rest of the part. So hit it good with the wire wheel, deburr it all, clean it all up, and they turned out fairly well. My stick welds are reasonable but nothing to write home about. Now it's time to go through and drill and countersink four holes in each of the top plates for number 10 flathead wood screws that will screw up from the bottom into the 2x4s. Next it's time to begin some assembly and I'll shoot some paint on these. You can see I'm just screwing in from the bottom for the 2x4 and then I hit them with some cheap 99 cent black lacquer paint which will hold up just fine for this application. Oh and it was really cold in the shop that night so hit them with a little torch to heat them up just a touch. And the last step for assembly after paint is to put two bearings on each corner and bolt them on. As I said, these are basic skates. None of them have a steer mechanism on them. If I wanted to upgrade, I would take one of these and put a pivot, uh, some sort of bearing surface that can rotate on the top. In this case, I just wanted it as simple as possible, so it worked out fairly well for me. And in a later video, I'll show moving machinery around with these skates. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe, like, uh, comment, please, and uh, we'll show you some more content like this. And here are a few prints of how I made the skates. Thanks again, and we'll see you soon.